When we talk about issues like widespread corruption, demographic changes, violence among civilians, does Sikkim come to your mind uh, the way, say, Nagaland or Manipur? Unlikely. That's it. There are several issues where Sikkim is in the same position as other northeast states. And that is precisely why in this week's Decoded, we will try to explain why this Sikkim election can be pivotal in the Himalayan kingdom's future. AFSPA, friction between state government and center, civilians killed by thousands at the hands of security forces and insurgents, absolute collapse of law and order, massive protests against illegal immigration. These are just some of the issues that we have not really associated Sikkim with. The kingdom became a part of India in the 70s, but since then, the state has perhaps been the most consistently peaceful state in the Northeast, and for a good reason. While other states also witnessed several political crises, Sikkim remained stable and an island of calm. This perhaps explains why, while several thousand people in Meghalaya, Nagaland, Manipur, Tripura and even Assam battle poverty, Sikkim is pretty much on the other end of the spectrum. The tiny state with less people than some districts in Uttar Pradesh has a per capita income higher than Delhi. Yes, Delhi. And I'm pretty sure that unlike Delhi, Sikkim is actually livable. While other states battled and continue to battle, Insurgency, Sikkim has never had ish such issues. AFSPA was never an issue. There is no demand for an independent Sikkim, the kind of demands that we have seen in Nagaland, Manipur, Assam and even Tripura. Sikkim is a tourist paradise and its location gives it a huge advantage. To put this in context, although this is not a fair comparison, Mizoram this year had 1 lakh tourists. However, according to the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, the number of tourists in Sikkim in 2022 reached an all-time high of just over 16 lakh. To put that in context, that is over two times the state population. And politically, two names, Narbahadur Bhandari and Pawan Kumar Chamling. These two alone can define Sikkim's history post the merger with India. Bhandari ruled for 15 years, 1979 to 1994, while Chamling ruled from 1994 to 2019. So, during a time when the Northeast oscillated between patches of peace to extreme violence, Sikkim remained calm, focused and on the path to progress. The past five years, however, have not been as peaceful in Sikkim. And we are not trying to target the SKM government here or the leadership of Prem Singhole. You see, last year it was the first time we made a video about mob violence in Singtam town in Sikkim. Recently, there was a shocking attack on former Speaker of the Sikkim Assembly, K.N. Rai, who is also a leader of the opposition party, the SDF, which is under Chamling. Again, political violence is not uncommon in the Northeast, but in Sikkim, it surely has become much more common in the recent past. Add to this, we also saw the shocking crackdown on students in Gazing who were simply protesting for better educational facilities and opportunities. Now yes, given how much violence we witnessed in other parts of the Northeast, one could argue that we are reading too much into the spurt in violence in Sikkim. But by that logic, we can also say that if a peaceful state begins to get restive, we should pay twice the attention to ensure it does not become a common theme. Then there was the issue of electoral bonds which threw up a surprising stat. Only the two aforementioned parties from Sikkim, the SKM under PS Gole and SDF under Pawan Chamling received money. No other party from the Northeast, including parties like the NPP, which have a much bigger presence, featured on the list. A closer inspection of the SKM also showed that the party received funding from dubious companies like Future Gaming. Now, let us not forget that the Comptroller and Audit General of India, or CAG, raised serious concerns about irregularities involving marketing agents, including Future Gaming and Hotel Services, owned by lottery magnate Santiago Martin in a 2017 report submitted to Parliament. Now, we all know that Martin featured prominently in the recent data released by the Election Commission of India. But what was concerning to see is that nearly half of the electoral bond purchases were made while the state was suffering from the worst floods in Sikkim's recent history. 
we do not want to read too much into it but perhaps this explains why not a single person has been punished for the glacial lake disaster in the state even though it left hundreds dead and several thousand displaced and talking about floods let us move on to the next chapter When you are called the Himalayan kingdom it comes with its own baggage so while majestic mountains and picturesque lakes bring in revenue from millions of tourists it also brings in problems that other states may never encounter we have done a few videos explaining the true scale of disasters that could strike the state in the coming days in our videos about the floods but here is the issue in summary the lake that burst in sikkim was to put it mildly the shortest trailer of what could potentially unlock in sikkim if things go bad You see the Lonak Lake is one of the 13 glacier lakes in Sikkim and despite asking the center for an early warning system to help the state the state has not received any support from the center yet in this regard what happened in Chungthang was a result of years of corruption that was time and again ignored by those in power and when asked about it it simply became a pointless debate about Chamling versus Gole versus BJP versus Congress versus SKM versus SDF etc etc As usual the state's residents paid the highest price again we have explained all this in details in several videos and oh there is also a human issue that has taken center stage in sikkim and this perhaps one of the few issues where sikkim resonates with the rest of northeast the tiny state has been raising very strong demands for implementing the inner line permit on the lines of several other northeast states and leaders like bhaichung bhutia who is now with chamling have made ilp one of their main demands You see when the state population is low every increase seems much bigger than it may be let me give you an example if 60000 people become residents of say uttar pradesh it would hardly change the state's population numbers in sikkim that would translate into a state population rising by almost 10% like other states sikkimese people too are worried about outsiders taking over irreversible demographic changes the pressure on resources like land drinking water etc These are not mere concerns these are among the many issues that are now being raised in Sikkim despite being one of the more affluent states the state's healthcare system resembles a joke one hospital the stnm is all that one can think of when talking about good hospitals the schools and colleges while not bad as part of eastern nagaland garo hills in meghalaya are nowhere near the national standards and substance abuse in sikkim has been a matter of study for years now as the state heads into elections it stands at a very crucial juncture defying the trends in the northeast the state has remained peaceful progressive and prosperous yet if leaders focus only on wrestling for power and not focusing on ensuring long term safety of states resources and residents it is guaranteed to become like other northeast states so it does not matter if gole chamling or someone else emerges as the winner what will matter is what they do for their beloved state forget to like share and subscribe to east mojo for any queries put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications